one man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. <laughs> We worship you, yeah. Rosere
Come on, tell him you're worthy of my praise. Tell him you are worthy of my worship. Tell him your love, you're worthy of my love. Tell him you are worthy of my time. Tell him you're worthy of my possessions. Tell him you're worthy of my gifts and callings. Everything belongs to you. You deserve it all, oh God. You're worthy of it, oh God. You're worthy of it, oh God. You're worthy of it, oh God. You are worthy of it, oh God. You're worthy of it, oh God. You're worthy of it, oh God. You are worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. Give him a mighty, 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 mighty. Glory to God. Thank you, choir. Thank you for that wonderful worship. So blessed to have you in my life. Come on, give them a mighty, mighty hand clap of praise. Good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're watching from, Aunt Yet, welcome to our program of Thursday service. I thank God for what he is going to do in our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. We are live on Facebook.com. We are live on YouTube in high definition, the clearest picture coming from studio. We're live on Lighthouse Television. We're live on Urban Television. Above all, we are live on our own manifest television. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. And we are getting more and more platforms on board very soon on our manifest. So, yeah, get ready, get ready. The gospel must be preached through the whole nation in Jesus' mighty name through manifest television. And we believe to go far. We believe to go far. So send a link. I always tell people that some of you or many of you who are watching or listening in, your lives have been changed. Your marriages have been transformed because somebody took the responsibility one day to reach out to you. You perhaps didn't even want to connect. But you found yourself listening on the day when you needed this message most. And not only has it transformed your life, it is changing many around you. So I tell people, this is the only way you can evangelize. We are in the last days. You know, we're running out of time. We need to reach as many people as we can. So whatever you can do to make sure that somebody's tuning in, do it for them. No matter what they think or interpret about you. Most important thing is that you are preaching the gospel. So send those links of YouTube, send those links of Facebook. Tell somebody to tune in on radio or television. And I believe that God is going to bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Um, firstly, let me announce, like as usual, we've told you that we start different manifests on different uh, days of the week. Or this Sunday, we're starting another manifest at Muyenga at uh, the Hotel International Mienga. So at 9.30 every Sunday, there's a live stream uh, uh, that's going to be there. Manifest is starting somewhere there. So if you're in the area, uh, make sure to visit us on Sunday. And I asked Pastor Zach to send me a feed on Sunday so I can see you because it comes from those hills. So I usually read testimonies on Thursdays and will allow me to go through a few of them, quite a number of them, continue sending, I read them. We celebrate with you. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the power of their testimony. Akez Anada, 12 years, lived in unbelief, did not understand the word of God. But through this ministry, somebody connected uh, something into her spirit and the word has given her a different outlook on life. Rebecca Sanyu, 18 years was in church, but she did not have a revelation of God. She served and she did not know how to even pray. She even dreaded uh, hearing the word. I think she was among those Christians, like I was many years ago, I would come in for praise and worship. And when it comes to the word, I, 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 I doze off. You're free, Rebecca Sanyo. 
Zororo Ndoro from Zimbabwe for nine years. He, he did not have a zeal for the things of God, but it's through this ministry that a great change has happened in his life. Judith from USA, nine years stagnant in many aspects, nine years he hired. I see Phoebe in Kinder, 10 years of hypertension, sent in prayer request, now testifies her blood pressure miraculously went back to normal. Even without taking drugs, the doctors have confirmed that it's normal now. Martha delivered from 10 years of um, spiritual spouses and bad dreams. Oh, it's a lot. Stuart was addicted to sports betting and he has spent almost everything and contemplated suicide. But God has delivered Stuart. Father, we thank you for Stuart's life and may he stay free from that spirit. George, 10 years of, of addiction, of pornography. Um, Joan healed, I see Irene healed of a leg injury, ulcers, Keza, um, promotions, job promotions, Becky Chocho, Rhoda, uh, Divine Providence, Darcy, Mujisha, Masika, Sharon, Josephine, Bridget, all of them are testifying of divine provision. Of course, of course, of course. Tell your neighbor, my testimony is next. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? I believe it too. I believe it too. But I'm about to hear something crazy coming from your house. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout amen. He's a God of miracles. He's a God of miracles. Um, we're going to give today. We have platforms of giving. Of course, those especially who are out of the country and some in the country, but especially for those of you who are out of the country, we have the website. You can go on fenero.org slash give or you can... Uh, download our mobile application, which is on Apple and Android uh, stores. That app is called Fenero app. It has sermons, it has devotionals, it has worship and many other things. But it also give, has a giving section. And those two, that is a website and the app, accept Visa, MasterCard, MTN Mobile Money, Airtel Mobile Money and M-Pesa for the sisters and brothers who are in Kenya. And uh, those of you who are in Uganda, you don't need to go through the website or the uh, app. You can actually go directly through your MTN or Airtel Mobile Money the merchant codes are flashed on the screens. And lastly, we bank also with Equity Bank Uganda. The name of the account is Fenero Ministries International. And both the Ugandan shillings and the United States dollar accounts are flashed on the screens for you. Especially those of you who are giving through the uh, account, please be specific on your giving. Is it tithe? Is it offering? Is it seed? Whatever the Lord impresses on your heart. The Bible says the Lord loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in the giving. In this ministry, you don't believe in manipulating people to give. No because the heart must be made up in the giving. As you are blessed, you're blessed. And I thank you that we're giving more and more every month ever since COVID. Thank you for your continuous support and we're putting your money to good use. Father, I thank you for the most generous people in the world. May 2022 be the most amazing year of their lives. Uh, not only but I see that it's going to be the beginning of many great years ahead, uh, touching their financial liberties. I thank God that He's going to provide way beyond many of you expect, and that the health is yours and peace in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed and believed and all since said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Our reading tonight goes uh, from Genesis the 22nd chapter, Genesis, the 22nd chapter, very famous story for those of you who read the Bible and for those of you who just started recently, it's also something that I believe that you will love to hear. Jesus Christ is amazing in how he works in revealing himself and changing our destinies. And when I was uh, preparing myself for this sermon, I had a great vision about what this sermon is going to do for, for some of us, or many of us, who are willing to receive the Word of God. And I believe that something amazing is going to happen in your life from today. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. A man called Abraham, we know very well, is uh, consecrated, called for a great work, for which later we discover through Scripture, that he becomes the father of all of us who believe. So I can comfortably say, our father, Abraham. 
uh, had a trial, a test by God one day. And that's where Genesis 22 is set. It came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said unto him, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, thy only son. There's some deep there. And I hope one day I'm able to teach more on why he's his only son, Isaac. And yet we know that Abraham had uh, Ishmael. So why does God say that he is your only son? There's something about the children God uh, gives us through specific covenants and mandate. I'll teach about it soon one day. And not that he does not treat uh, respect the others as life too or that he doesn't have a destiny for them. In fact, one time when Abraham goes to God, he prays to God and says that may Ishmael live before you. And God said, no doubt I shall make him a great nation as well. But my covenant is through Isaac, for through Isaac your seed shall be called. So it's not that he will not take care of the others as well. He has plans for them. But, but the child of your vows is an important thing. Lemuel's mother, when she's speaking in, to him in Proverbs 31, when she's speaking the destiny of Lemuel, she calls him the son of her vows. The son of her vows. You see, there, there's something uh, very beautiful there. And I think one day I will share deeply about it. Anyway, take now your son, your only son whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I tell thee of. Abraham rose up early, for those of you who don't know the story, in the morning and saddled his ass or donkey, took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, cleft the wood for the burnt offering, rose up and went up into the place God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And then he said unto the young men, which were the servants, abide here with the ass and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and will come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. He called his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? <laughs> Get it in. No. <laughs> They're going to uh, sacrifice him that day. Anyway, Abraham said to his son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. He reached the place where God had told him. Abraham built an altar there, laid the wood in order, bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram, offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Today, I want to talk about the God of contingent plans. Somebody shout hallelujah. The God of contingent plans. We all read in Jeremiah 29, 11, The Bible says, for I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, he said. He said, but the thoughts that I have for you are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. In other words, I'm not far from your expectation. I work with your expectation. I don't work against your expectation. I'm not indifferent to your expectation. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing to know that in whichever plans God has, he has a raid revelation in your spirit to have a certain expectation. And he says, I will work according to your expectation. I know what you expect. Satan as well works in that realm. And then he comes against us and then he gets into what you expect and tries to delude you and give you false images and visions concerning your destiny because he knows the more fragile that you are, the easier he can manipulate you because of your vulnerability 
as a result of the ignorance that is within you. So Satan works also in the place of our expectation. And if I'm allowed by God one day, I'll go deep into helping us understand why it's important for you to, through the word, draw your right expectation. The right expectation. To have a vision of what you anticipate, what you expect, what you dream, what you have a hope for. To have a definitive vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. Our God is a God of contingent plans. He's not a God of improvisation. You know I miss to improvise? Something befalls and then you sort of think up, conjure up an idea of how to fix it by putting a temporary uh, rescue uh, idea by providing for an option that can sustain you through the trouble or the emergency of that hour. That, that's improvisation. In other words, it was not in plan. It wasn't prepared for. So the provisions that were unprepared for are improvisations. God does not work in the realm of improvising. He does not improvise. He's not shocked by an event. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He knows or knew the beginning. He knows where you are present, and he knows the end or your future. God knows our future. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he is the God who has planned for contingencies, even if things might not go the way you had planned or had dreamed or it had been arrayed or planned by God, he has still created certain provisions prepared before you were even formed in your mother's womb to help you fix what will break in your future. That's a contingent plan. So nothing is going to shock him. Oh, I did not know that you'd do this. No, he has already planned for you through the scriptures. But not everyone walks in God's contingent plans. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible is full of contingent interventions. Things that God deliberately has given or prepared answers for in the questions of the futures of the people that we read in scripture, their destinies sort of go off tangent and they're confused and they don't know what to do. But God had a plan when you reach in that trouble, what he was to do. He knew what to do. There was always a plan when you got in trouble. But many believers don't see and they're not able to connect to that power and some are destroyed. Not because the plan of God fails or that it's not available, but because they cannot connect to it through faith. Remember, Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. But you see, it's through that knowledge that faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now that this revelation has come, if something should happen in your life, Tonight, God is stirring the right understanding and positioning in the spirit for the plan of God to continue and his will to be fulfilled in your life either way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me take you on a small journey through scripture to help some of us put context to what I'm saying here. If you remember in Genesis, the beginning, Adam and Eve, they know uh, each other and then they have two children, Cain and who? Abel. And the scriptures tell us God accepted that man's sacrifice and then he rejected Cain's sacrifice. We remember Cain kills who? Abel, because he was wroth. His countenance fell because God had not accepted his sacrifice. Scripture now tells us God, you know, speaks judgment over Cain because of the act that had opened its mouth uh, and, and, and swallowed the blood of the innocent brother and then he is sentenced to being a vagabond a beggar on the earth and he left the presence of God so scripture tells us later that Adam and Eve knew each other again or Adam knew his wife again and God bore them a son called Seth 
For the Bible says, Eve said, God has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. In the place of Abel, whom Cain slew. He did not say, God has given me another son. He said, God has given me another seed in the place of Abel, whom Cain slew. So that means, one, it's obvious God knew that Cain would slay Abel. But there was a question on how do we preserve the worshiper? How do we preserve the spirit of a man who knows how to seek and worship me in spirit and in truth? And it says, if this should be killed, I will bring a man in the same place of the one whom Cain has slain because I need to teach the sons of men how to worship me. He gave him a man in the place of. Eve recognizes that this was not just an average man. This was a man who came in the place of. Somebody shout hallelujah. That was a contingent plan. That if Satan wanted to take a worshiper, God had a plan of raising another. And the Bible says, he begets who? Enosh or Enos. And the scriptures tell us, then men began to call the name of God in the lineage of Seth. In the lineage of Seth. So Seth begets Enos. And in that generation of Enos, the Bible says that men begin to seek God. There was a plan to continue the gospel in that form in spite of the fact that Satan wanted to take the life of the worshiper. We go in the story of Moses. God called Moses. And his work mandate was very simple. To get the children of Israel out of the hand of the Egyptian and take them into the promised land. Are you following? So scriptures are clear. The children of Israel provoke Moses to anger. And when God tells him to speak to a rock because they were thirsty, instead out of anger, the Bible says he smites the rock twice and the water comes out abundantly. Congregation drinks and their beasts as well are fed. But God is angry with Moses because he did not sanctify his name. He went against the instruction. And therefore, the man who God had chosen to lead the children of Israel out of bondage into the promised land has failed on mission. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 27, verses 18, the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, now that Moses had failed and, and, and God uh, could not continue with Moses, yet the children of Israel have to be led out from the wilderness into the promised land as it was the mandate of Moses. He now comes to Moses and tells him, take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay upon him your hand and set him before Eliezer the priest and all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight and put some of your honor and authority upon him. There's some deep there. Moses did, didn't give it all. Put some of your own and authority upon him that all the congregation of the Israelites may obey him. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua and set him before Eliezer the priest and all the congregation and he laid his hands upon him. That's verses 22. Uh, and Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua, set him before Eliezer the priest and all the congregation. And verses 23, and he laid his hands upon him and commissioned him as the Lord had commanded. He commissioned him as the Lord had commanded. From then on, Joshua takes over a responsibility that was not originally given in plan, but because God had a contingent plan, the gospel had to continue with the obedience of Moses or without the obedience of Moses. Eli and his sons. We see that Eli was a priest, wonderful man. And then later on, he goes off the way of God and his sons seen and God judges Eli and his sons it was in plan that after Eli his sons were to take over the responsibility of priesthood but they went and uh, they practiced all manner of perversion and it vexed God and in there God had a plan there's a little boy being raised 
within this man's courts called who? Samuel. And little do the sons of Eli know that if they play in this call, God has a man he has anointed right in there. He was consecrated right from his mother's womb because he was born by a Nazarite vow. You see, Hannah asked for a male child and she promised God that she shall give that boy to God for service. So Samuel is born. And when he's 12 years, the Bible says after being weaned, he's handed over to Samuel as the firstling, her firstling from her womb for him to serve under Eli. She's handed, he's handed over to Eli. And so scriptures tell us he's serving this man. And somehow the presence of God starts to leave Israel. The voice of God starts to leave Israel. And at one point, the Bible says that the word was cast. And in that time, there was no open vision. The word became so scarce. The Bible says that it became so precious. It became so precious in those days. There was no open vision. No man could hear God, even if they sought God. Even if they prayed and fasted, they would not hear God. The Bible says that there's a young man called Samuel. He had God. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, the 11th verse, the Lord told Samuel, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel. That is when God appears to him. He tells him, Behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel at which both ears of all who hear it shall tingle. On that day, he says, I will perform against Eli all that I've spoken concerning his house from beginning to the end. And now I announce to him that I will judge and punish his house forever for the iniquity which he knew. For his sons were bringing a curse upon themselves, blaspheming me, God, and, did not and he did not restrain them. So God passes judgment over Eli and over his sons and he preserves Samuel for the man who should take over the responsibility of priesthood in the place of Eli. Eli was originally God's plan and idea. Eli's sons were originally God's plan and idea. But they went against the way of God and they were substituted by another man who was availed by God. The story of Saul and David. Saul was king of Israel. And then Saul went against the way of God. And what happened? God raised there, David. He poured an anointing on that boy when the man was still in his office. God replaced Saul in the place of the kingly anointing, yet he preserved the office of Saul for a purpose because the boy he had anointed king was not yet trained, ready to sit in the office and there was wisdom to function in the anointing of the office. So we see that delay of being anointed as king under the hand of Samuel, but not able to sit in the seat or the office of the king because it carries no wisdom, training or experience and skill to run that great office. But again, that is a contingent plan. God knew that Saul would mess up and then he raised another man in his stead. So sometimes there are questions on, was it that these people could not change was it that they could not do otherwise? Oh, yes. There's a provision for that also. You see, and I'm going to come to that. But let me finish this. Vashti and Esther. Vashti was the queen uh, of one king at Atsasas. Right? And uh, this man loved his wife. And uh, he calls her out one day to display her beauty. She refused. And when she does... The king later on goes to the wise men and they tell him, if you continue with this woman, every woman else in the kingdom is going to what? Is going to rebel. And so the king orders and then officially divorces who? Vashti. There was a slave girl who had been preserved by God who did not seem to be in the plan or even close to God's idea, but she is somewhere kept under the household of a man called Mordecai. And so we see Mordecai front her. She goes through the right processes as was given through tradition. And the next thing we know, she becomes queen. So when Vashti 
forgets her responsibility or ignores the plan and purposes of God, God had already provided for another woman to take that responsibility. God always has contingent plans. He always does. I've given you more than one, two, three, four, and some of you who read the Bible, you'll find more examples of contingent plans. God is a God of contingent plans. If you refuse, there is a man waiting. If you <laughs> rebel, there is a man waiting. If you take it lightly, there is a man who will not. If you ignore it, there is a man who will attend to it somewhere in the world. If it touches his plan and purpose, he always has contingent plans. He always has contingencies. He provides for our rebellion and indifference. Somebody shout hallelujah. But I'm, I'm going to come to, to, to the better part. So the question sometimes would go, would these people have changed? Would they have turned? If there was no provision of the change, then God would not define words as repentance. Doctrines such as repentance imply that God can give us second chances if we are within the line of truth and understanding. The Bible says he shall restore the years that were eaten by the cankerworm, the caterpillar. These were people who lost years because they frustrated the plan or purposes of God concerning their lives. And he has said, I can actually provide for you to go back and redeem that which you lost. That's what Jesus came to do, to save that which was lost. It was already lost. Somebody shout hallelujah. But God had a plan of bringing it back to life again. That's why they say that he came to make dead men live. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why later on when we go in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 45, the Bible gives us the two Adams. And it says, and it is written that the first Adam was made a living soul, 1 Corinthians 15 45, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. You see, Jesus also comes in form of a contingent plan. But what Adam failed to fix in the garden, I will fix through my son. He knew Adam would fall. It's not a shock for him to fall, you see. But the fact that God raised Jesus Christ in the place of the man that failed or that he had a plan even for when man would fall, he would have a plan for the redemption of that man's life, then you should know that that's just the way of God. He always has a plan somewhere hidden for whatever failure it is, for whatever pain it is, for whatever disappointment it is, he always has a plan. He always has a plan. He always has a plan. Now, let me talk to that one who thinks that because this guy said, I want nothing to, to do with you, you are gone. Send him this someone. God always has a contingent plan. You go out of her life, God will bring another one. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me speak to that young man who thinks that because this girl, I want to talk to him and, and that, that's the end of his life, that's the end of your destiny. You think that God is done with you. No, no, God is not done with you because she didn't talk to you anymore. He had a plan. He knew that she would walk out at that point. He knew that he would walk out at that point. But even in the walking out, he had a plan to make you prosper and not to harm you, to give you a future hope and that expected end. Some of you think that it's the end of your world because you were fired on your job. Uh-uh. He had a contingent plan after you were fired. He had a contingent plan after you had retired. He had a contingent plan when things were going to fall out. He knew that this can end here, but I still have a plan for you. And if you want to know, have a clue of what plan this is. He says, these thoughts are of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. Even when things have gone out of line, the will of God on your life must continue. He has plans for you. He has a purpose for you. He knows where you're going. He knows where you began from. He knew all of your weaknesses, but he still chose you. Why? Because he had a contingent plan. 
He says, brethren, let us consider some of us. You know, you know, you can point fingers at others, but consider you. He says, you were not wise after the flesh, but he had a contingent plan. You were not mighty after might, but he had a contingent plan. You were weak and confounded, and it shows you in your weakness because he had a contingent plan of raising strength where there was weakness, of raising beauty where there was ugliness and darkness, of, of raising joy and peace where there was pain and frustration and confusion. He always has a contingent plan. That's what the Bible says. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. They sing it. Peace for despair. He had a plan. When the doctor gave you those news, he had, he had a plan. He had a plan. He had a plan somewhere. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't think that God is out because a doctor is out. No. Don't think that God is out because your employer is out. Don't think that God is out because your economy is out. Uh -uh. It's what's out. God ain't out. He's infinite. Somebody shout hallelujah. God is not out of plans. He knew that one day you'd go to this door and that door would shut. But because you have an expectation, he had provided something somewhere that when this door closes, the problem is many of us get so blind on what closes that we don't allow God to open our eyes to see what is open already. Do you know that when Satan was crucifying Jesus, he knew he had dealt with God's contingent plan? He knew that even the contingent he had dealt with. Why? Because this man, has come, you know, in the likeness of God. He knows no sin. Let me also get this guy, touch him, put him on the cross and crucify him. But the Bible says, because of that crucifixion, he brought many sons to glory. He did not know that by killing one man, something was going to multiply and enter. Every man who dares to believe for as many as believed on him, the Bible says he gave them the right to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. Now he has hundreds and millions of people to deal with and all of them are children of God. They carry the same light. When Jesus was about to leave, he spoke those words. He says, the life that I have, I have given you. The glory that the Father has given me, I give unto you. It is a good thing that I go because he thinks he can frustrate a contingent. There is still another contingent on that contingent that if the devil frustrates that one, God still has another one above that one and he's endless, brother. Somebody saw it, hallelujah. When you understand that kind of life, you don't worry about what comes. God always has a plan. Somebody shout hallelujah. God always has a plan for you. There is always a way somewhere. There is always a program for you. There is always an answer to that question. There is always a certain strategy. Something out there is working for you even when you know you are stuck. Somebody says, oh, you know now, I've done this, I've borrowed my money, I've given everything, I've done everything. What, how am I going to build the house I want to build? There's a plan. You mean God didn't know that you get to that point where you get stuck? He knew. He knew. He knew. One time, <laughs> years ago, somebody I really loved dearly, still do love. Walked out of the ministry and I went to God. I said, why did this person leave? And God said, the business of leaving, I'll explain later. i never forget this. I always have a plan. I'll bring 10 times better than that person. And God brought somebody in that place 10 times better because God has a contingent plan for anything, for anything that will ever get you to a place of question, frustration, confusion, exasperation. Wherever you are, God will always have a plan. The only problem is we don't open our eyes to the plan. We 
bury our frustrations with our dreams. We bury our future with the frustration of the hour. And you think that because it has died that very moment, God has posed your destiny and there is no plan for you in the next five or six years. But let me tell you something. God has a plan. There's a woman whose life paused because somebody promised to take her one time to Canada for a job. And then that did not go through and she paused her life right there. She still paused up to today. She still, she thinks that God is done because this person did not get her that job. Uh -uh. You don't know God. You don't know God. Somebody shout hallelujah. God has a plan for everything. There is somebody right now watching me. You suffered loss. You lost your parents. You lost your brother. You lost your sister. And you think that that's the end of it. But God knew that this person was going to live at this particular point. And he still provided a contingent plan. Just open your eyes and see. Literally, Abraham killed his son. Because the angel said, you have not withheld back your hand from killing. That means literally, Ab Abraham killed Isaac. Are you hearing me? He killed Isaac. But in stretching his hand to obey God, to kill his only son, even in that, God gets a ram and puts it in a thicket and it gets stuck by something holding it. You might think it's a mistake, but it's all in the power of God to make sure that, 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 that God's contingent plan does not escape the hand of the man who has to slay it on an altar to fulfill the sacrifice in the place of the son he loved. Even more than that, he will arrest our contingencies to make sure that they are in our reach. He will get the ram and not only will he bring it to you, but it will get caught. The Bible says the ram was caught in the thicket. I'm talking about that job that he brings and he even appoints the people before you to make sure that when they are interviewing, they know you and they'll do everything possible to provide for that job. That even for the things that you're short of, they will see how to, to, to provide for, to make sure you get that job. And oh, for some of you, the contingencies caught in thickets will mean that they will look for you instead of you looking for them. For some of you, the ram caught in the thicket will mean that they will come richer, they will come wiser, they will come stronger. It will open better. It will be bigger than it was the first time. That's the ram caught in a thicket. God wants to make sure that this time when the contingent plan comes, nothing can slow it, nothing can frustrate it, nothing can, can, can disrupt it, nothing. It has to work. Tell your neighbor it has to work. It has to work. That is how I know. Come rain, come sunshine. I will make it. Because there are many contingencies for Ubega Grace. Are you hearing me? That is how I know that you will make it because God has a million and uncountable infinite plans for you. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. That means I have provided for the contingencies. I've provided for you. I've provided. For some, they might come with restoration. For some, they might come with replacements. But whichever way they come, if they are from God, they are good. Tell your neighbor, we'll be fine. Yeah, tell yourself, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. COVID came, God had a contingent plan. Yeah, we'll be fine. Somebody shout hallelujah. We've lost our loved ones, granted, yeah. But God has a contingent plan. He's not run out of ideas and ways to make us happy. Listen, he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Have you not read it? Such places are contingent. Because originally there was no way. Who has understood what I just said? Originally, there was no way. But then he said, because Joan has to go through. Let me break through something here. Are you hearing me? Our 
God can get stuck. That's the thing about the children of Israel. They are standing before the sea and the Egyptians are coming after them. And God says, when it comes to contingencies, I'm not subject to the laws of the earth. When it comes to contingencies, I don't care whether there was a wall before. I can get that wall out. I can break that metallic door. I can pack the Red Sea if I have to. But whether the devil wants it or not, you will make it. You make it. You will make it. You will make it. I don't care whether the doctors say that you have stage four. You will make it. There is still a contingent plan on that stage four report. There is still a contingent plan on that HIV report. There is still a contingent plan on when the doctors say it is gone. There is still a contingent plan. Even when you are chased out of that house, there is a contingent plan. Even when they say it, it's over, it's not over until God. God said it's over. It's not. It's not. Just open your eyes and see. Open your eyes and see. Because some of you, the plans can be available and you can't see them. Yeah. Hagar almost died with that boy in the desert. Not because there was no water. Her eyes were closed. God tells her, do not cry, for God has heard the tears of the lad. And the Bible says, and God opened her eyes to see the well that was there. A woman almost died of thirst in the presence of a well because she was blind. Some of our contingencies are available. You're just blinded. Some of you are just blinded. Your answer is not far. Your marital destiny is there. You just don't see it yet. Your breakthrough is there. Your healing is available. You just don't see it because you don't understand the God with contingent plan. He does not improvise because it's not shocking him. Nothing is an emergency to God. Uh-uh. It's nothing shocks him. But you have to stand always in every circumstance and say, even with this one, I will go through. Because he knew it was coming. And in spite of it all coming, he still told me, move on. If he had the ability to look back and tell me, ignore it, why should I give it attention? Why? There's a plan. Somewhere there's a plan. Somewhere. Somewhere, somehow there is a plan. God wants you to get to a point where you can look left and right and there is no provision of breakthrough. But have this strength inside you telling you, I still believe you because in every change you abide faithful. Even when I'm not faithful, the Bible says you abide faithful for you cannot deny your own self. God has a contingent plan for our houses. He has a contingent plan for our families. He has a contingent plan for your job. He has a contingent plan. He knows what to do. He knows what to do. He knows what to do. It's only dangerous when the thing or the person was the original plan and it went off. Are you hearing me? But if your conscience is pure, are you hearing me? Wait. No, what if you messed up? Repent. The contingent comes back. <laughs> Just repent. Say, God, I messed up here. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done this. I've learned my mistake. Forgive me, help me. And contingent comes back. Woof. He says, but you know what, De devil? Eh? This is my boy right here. <laughs> you, you, you understand? Yeah, he messed up, but I told him I have plans for him, so... <laughs> I told her, yeah, 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 she's my daughter. She has messed up. Yes, but devil, eh? yeah. This is where now I cannot, I can't help you. Eh? This is my daughter. In spite of it all, I had plans for her. And I promised her through my word that if she will turn and be converted, I should heal her. Yeah, that's what he said. If my people, which are called by my name, 
If you know that you're called by his name, you're his daughter, you're his son. He says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, my face and turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I should heal or will heal their land. He will heal. So he tells the devil, even though, yes, this person has messed up, but I promised him that if he will turn, I'll heal him. I'll heal him. God has contingencies. I said, God has contingencies. Jesus was the example. His death was the deeper example. So that's why when, 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 when Saul persecutes the church, Jesus appears to him and asks him, can you kick against the pricks? Why are they prickly? They are contingencies. C can you fight the church? You can't fight the church. Nobody can fight the church of Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived. Nobody can break the altar of Jesus. No government, no empire, no institution, nothing. If you ever see a church frustrated in any nation, it goes back to the responsibility of that church. Somebody is not praying. Somebody is not turned. Somebody is not converted. But when they turn and they go on their knees, some of you have heard of the stories when the president, Idi Amin, in Uganda in those days, thought that he would frustrate the work of the born again movement in Uganda. Our fathers tell you, I met one of them. These boys knelt on their knees and they said, this man must leave Uganda. In fact, there is a man of God, I will not mention his name. He mentioned the day Idi Amin was to live in Uganda. He was a man of God. And that day, Idi Amin packed. The church of Jesus Christ is still in Uganda. You, you, you can't fight the church of Jesus Christ. Ask all of those people who have fought the church from the beginning of the earth. 2021, Christians were persecuted. Christians were burnt alive to stay. Christians were killed. Christians were whatever. You know, people, people pronounce Christianity gone. 2021, Christianity is still alive. Somebody's tuning in to that very old message and they're still getting blessed because God in every generation has a contingency. It's bigger than our lives. And you can't kill it because you've taken the life of one. No, no. Somebody will sprout through. Some of you have read church history. A man called John Wycliffe reads and discovers a some called justification through faith. Oh, it was a great revelation. Great revelation. Because during that time, the Roman uh, Catholic Church uh, had built a doctrine of justification through works, the venerations of Mary, penitences, and many things. And then this man started teaching people, telling him, no, we're not justified through works. We're justified through faith. And Wycliffe was killed. A couple of years later after his death, another young man called John Hus. Hus reads the works of this man. And he says, uh-uh. Even though this guy was killed, what he was preaching was true. And then, he too preaches the gospel and they killed him. In the 1500s, another young man, Martin Luther, comes on this thing and says, mm -mm. <laughs> he writes the 95-page thesis and he nails it on the Wittenberg church. He was calling them for a debate, peaceful debate. Are we justified through works or through faith? The scriptures are clear. They sought to kill him. The Moravians hid him and many other things. So the church went through all the persecution there is in the world. 2021, I am preaching justification through faith. Many men and women across the world are preaching justification through faith because within this line, he had contingent plans beyond what they could hold under any government. Those that persecuted them are dead, but Martin Luther is still alive. I'm talking about him. I don't know the man who killed John Hus, but I, I'm talking about John Hus in 2021. My children are learning about John Wycliffe. But the guys who killed them are not alive. But these men are alive. They're still teaching us. Are you hearing me? 
If you read ancient texts, you'll discover that almost all the disciples of Jesus Christ, the 12, almost all except John were killed. But God had contingencies. <laughs> the gospel is still preached. He sort of preserved the works of these men and men started digging out scrolls and, 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 and people are going in caves to do one thing and they find a scroll and, and they're going in one place and they find a writing. At one point in history, it, there, was a, there, were, there were people who had even planned to burn out anything called the Bible or the works of Jesus Christ and they did burn them out. And by the grace of God, the Irish hid the last texts and hid them for the next generation. God always has a contingent plan. 2021, we have 66 books. And how many books have been written because of these 66? Contingency. Contingency. God always has a plan. He always has a plan. Somebody shout hallelujah. So yes, that relationship ended. It doesn't mean you ended. That business ended. It doesn't mean you have ended. Your ministry, some of you pastors watching have closed in COVID and some tried to open and they are not able to have the numbers they were expecting. Open your eyes. There's a contingent plan. Are you hearing me? When they locked us up, I went to God for the contingency. And we went on YouTube hard. We went on Facebook hard. And it's growing by the day. We started manifest television hard. If the devil knew, he would not have brought COVID. Maybe he would have slowed to start manifest. But now manifest is hitting through the whole country. Contingency. What the enemy aimed for bad, God turns to good. And let me tell you, when we open, when we open, we are doing our statistics and Fanero has probably more than tripled in COVID. Why? Because even in that lockdown, God had a contingent <laughs> Laugh at the devil. So don't be intimidated by what is happening in your family, in your life, by what, what people are speaking. Don't be intimidated. There is a plan and it's going to come and you'll see it with your eyes. That's why me, I tell people there are things I'm convinced about. I'm convinced about my success. I'm convinced about my life, my marriage. My, I'm convinced about many things. Why? Because I know who holds them. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. All things will be well. I assure you, all things will be fine. Even in the hardest. You know, if you've not gone through hard times, you might never understand that. But if you've gone through hard times, like some of you, some of us, we can look back and say, hey, how did I go through this? There was a contingent plan. Brother, there was. So he doesn't cease. Always ask, make this prayer always and say, God, in the times when I'm not able to understand fully, open my eyes to see your contingencies. Open my eyes. Because when your eyes see, you pray right. You pray right. Some of you, the way you pray, it's so wrong. It just chases away the thing that was sent to revive your destiny. Are you following me? Ask God, what, what are you doing? And how, what am I to do now? The wisdom will always come. That is why when we talk about confessing right, we mean it. Because nothing cushions or provides for our contingencies with God, like right confession and right thought. Think God to be faithful. Think Him to understand your issues. Man said that we, uh, the Jesus, the, the, the Son of God that we're talking about, is not the priest which cannot be touched with our infirmities. That means he is touched. He feels our pain. He says we don't have a priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He is touched with our, uh, with our weaknesses. And he says, but was, and he was tempted in all points. He was tested. He will with the same temptation. The Bible says, create a way a contingency that you might be able to bear it. No test that has befallen yourself that which is common to man. Yes, it's not new. Whatever you will hear in the world, it's not new. But God has a way for you to go out. He will always have a way. Build that mentality in your spirit that there will always be a way for me. When you understand that, doors will not open 
when you walk to them. Doors will open before you walk to them. There's a difference. So when we tell some people that some of us are functioning under open doors and open heavens, many people don't understand it. The heavens opening to you is a man who has understood God's contingent plan for their lives and that it must work for your good. It is for you, not against you. You will always come out of one frustration to another destiny of graces and blessing. You will always come out of one pain into greater joy and peace. I have seen God's contingent plans. I have seen. One time, let me give you one little story. One simple example of story. Um, I was living to a certain nation. I shared this story once, but this has come again to me. I was sharing this very story once in a, someone. And one time, I'm going to a certain nation, going to preach. And I ran late because I was ministering to someone. And when I get to the airport, this guy was a Muslim, I remember, because he had a, some black thing here. And I read his tag. It was a Muslim name. So I get into the line. And when I get through, I run to the counter. And uh, this man looks at me and said, you're late for your flight. We've closed. I'm sorry, it's not my way. I went through this. We are closed. I said, we are closed. Even said to Sound Road, we are closed. In the spirit realm, I saw that this was a spirit that just didn't want me to preach. I knew it was a hindrance. It was a nothing else. It was a hindrance. And I bowed my head like that and I started speaking in tongues. So, sir, um, I think you can step aside. We need to... I, I just couldn't leave the counter. I told the man, I have to go, I have to preach. He looked at me. So I think you don't understand it. We have closed, taking time. You cannot take the flight. Out of the blue. A woman comes, I've never seen her face. I don't even know her. It was my earlier years. It was in those days where everyone knew apostle. And then she comes screaming, I says, I cannot stand this injustice. And I realized she was putting on a tag as one of the staff in the same company. This man has been standing here and you're refusing him to bother. I'm going to report you to the supervisor. This is how you, this is how you do this. Is this what you do to these people? I'm going to report you to the supervisor. And I see this guy shaking like that. And then he goes back in the computer to check me in. And he's checking me in. And I'm looking, I'm like, what in the world is happening? The guy checks in, he checks in, he checks in. And then he gives me my body pass. She says, let me even help you carry your bag. She carried my bags <laughs> to the last check until I reached the plane and got up. She said, bye. She went away. I've never seen her again. Contingencies. The man of God had to preach. The man of God had to preach. The man of God had to preach. I can tell you story upon story upon story upon story and some of you when you look in your personal lives you will see God coming through when there was no answer. And then he said, no, I knew this was coming and I planned a way for you. Father, we thank you because our destinies have been sanitized tonight. Our vision has been cleared for us to see, to understand, to interpret, to know your will and desire concerning our lives. And I pray for the man or woman out there watching me that may God open your eyes to see what you must see in the time when it's most difficult, in the time when you are 
filled with questions and confusions in the time when you don't know how or where to go may God open your eyes to see that there was already a plan for you like he sent Jesus Christ because he would not let us perish but have eternal life when Jesus came he said I'm come that you might have life and have it to the fullest until it overflows he knows the plans that he has for you don't give up don't draw in don't succumb believe God even when there is no answer believe God even when you've had nothing in the air or voice speaking to you yet even when you don't see hope there is a plan for you to break through there is a place God has prepared for you to withstand and win in these circumstances because the Bible says he always causes us to triumph and maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place greater is he which is in you than he which is in the world I decree it upon your life regardless regardless you will make it you will make it and you'll come out better than when you entered in Jesus name amen glory to God the sick are healed right now the bound are free I see miracles are happening in our houses in our families in our ministries in our dreams in our aspirations all will be well in Jesus name amen if you've never given your life to Christ I want you to repeat these words after me the, con the, the ultimate contingency the only contingency for your salvation is Jesus Christ there's no other no name is given in the earth or under earth or in heaven where we've men is saved the name that is given is the name of Jesus you just need to repeat these words after me the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ you'll be saved so say Lord Jesus I thank you say these words say I thank you Jesus because you shed your blood for my sins you were raised for my glory tonight I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior I'm born again Amen. If you have made that prayer, you are a new creation. Go on for another dog slash salvation. Send me your stories, your testimony. I want to hear you. I want to reach out to you and help you understand what it means to be born again. Or you can call us on plus 256 200 99405. Or send in your testimonies on Fernando.org slash testimonies or call the same number plus 256 200 I also have a place where you can send your prayer requests. You can either send on Fernando.org slash prayer that is fanura.org slash prayer or you can uh, go in the mobile application uh, in the about us section somewhere there you'll find a place where you can submit your prayer requests i will read them i will pray for you i've had many testimonies coming through from those who have sent in their prayer requests i hope to hear from you very soon in jesus mighty name of prayed and believed amen for you you matter And her backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, you, you made a way And was standing Only because you made a way Let's sing the first verse. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best. Cause nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out You're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win 
by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Venero, make manners.